Good morning, October 17th, 2024. Welcome to Five Minutes on Faith. It's great to be with you today. I hope you're all well. Uh, before we get started on this series, part two of How Then We Shall Vote, let's open up in prayer. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for the opportunity to come forth, to hear your word, and that you would speak to our hearts individually and collectively, that we would know the questions to ask ourselves so we were checking ourselves before we check our ballots, that we are voting righteously and steadfastly to stand for your truth, that your kingdom Come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, you are using us as vessels to bring forth the truth of the kingdom onto this earth. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Okay, so let's get into this. You know, yesterday I started on this seven-part series about how then we shall vote. And there are seven different things that I have I shared with you. I had a, a, I saw a post on Facebook from a gal named Barbara Becker in Wyoming regarding some voting issues that we need to ask ourselves about. So yesterday we talked about voting for pro-life candidates. We had a scripture about that. We're going to continue on that same process today. Today we're going to talk about Israel. And the declaration is, as a voter, that I will vote for the most pro-Israel candidate because God blesses those who bless Israel and curses those who do not. And there's scripture to back it up. And that comes out of Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three. And I'll be sharing this with you from the Amplified version, but just for a little background, this is the beginning of God speaking to Abram and calling him out and developing the Abrahamic covenant with him and making some promises to him about his life and his protection and things like that. So we'll go through that, but this is a very strong and foundational scripture we really all need to understand. So let me read this to you from the Amplified and I'll walk through the four promises that are in these three verses. Again, this is Genesis 12 verses one through three. And this is the Lord speaking to Abram. And he, it says, now in Haran, and that is where Abram was living at the time, the Lord said to Abram, go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you abundantly and make your name great exalted and distinguished and you shall be a blessing and a source of great good to others i will bless and do good and benefit those who bless you and i will curse that is subject to my wrath and judgment the one who curses you despises you dishonors you or has contempt for you and in you, all the families and nations of the earth will be blessed. Well, it's pretty irrefutable that a huge amount of blessings has, have come out from technology, pharmaceutical, medical advancement, agricultural advancement. Um, all kinds of platforms have been enhanced and developed and the world has benefited from what Israel has developed. So you can just go and do some research on your own about that. I mean, just think about the simple thing. I don't have my phone right here, but we wouldn't have texting without Israel. So that's just one simple thing. But most med uh, a significant amount of medical uh, advancements and technology comes out of Israel. So from a health perspective, it's miraculous. From an agricultural perspective, Israel changed a dry, barren desert into a very prosperous land. So we just have to research the blessings that have come out of Israel. So let's go into the four promises that God defines here in this scripture so you can recognize what he's saying. First of all, it says in Genesis 12, 1, it says, go to the land which I will show you. So this was God calling Abraham out in faith, excuse me, Abram at the time, he had no idea where he was going. He was called out of his home, 
town and it says, leave your country, your relatives and your father's house. So this was a total separation from what he had been raised in. Now, most of us don't want to do that, but Abram was faithful and followed God. He stepped up and did what he did. This is a call to faith, and this is a great witness to all of us. The Lord promises, number two, I will make you a great nation. That's in Genesis 12, too. And, I will, and then it goes in the next part of that same passage there. It says, the third promise is, I will bless you, bless you abundantly, and I will make your name great. And the last verse, it says, I will bless and do good for and benefit those who bless you. These are those that stand with Israel. And I will curse, that is, they will be subject to my wrath and judgment, the one. This isn't a plural thing. This comes down to the individual. This is the one who curses, despises, dishonors, or has contempt for you. This is our responsibility as a Christian. We have to bless Israel. Israel is a covenant land. Israel sinned and repented. God has his hands on Israel, his word, he never, his covenant, he never changes. The words of his lips, he never, ever alters. So this is very serious. We need to think about this. And as we are voting, we are responsible for vetting out the most pro-Israel candidate because God blesses those who bless Israel and curses he who does not. So that's really a very sobering thought, but we have to be aware of what God's word says. And God is a God of justice and he will fight for his people. And if you go through, I actually put some notes. If you go to lesliebecker.org and go into blogs and you find this recording in my notes, I have several links in here about the Abrahamic covenant, about anti-Semitism, et cetera. And it comes from a ministry called Never Thirsty, like the Master Ministries. They did an excellent job vetting this information out and laying it out in a very understanding way. They have great references in their articles. I use it as a source periodically just to pull information out because they know a lot more about Israel than I do. But I recognize the wealth of the information, the richness of their research. And so I like to share that and use that because I don't want to be saying anything that doesn't line up with the word of God and that hasn't been vetted by other sources. So that's what we're going to pray about today, that we have discernment to vote for the most pro-Israel candidate because we know that God will bless those who bless Israel and he will curse the one who curses them. So Father God, give us wisdom, discernment, that you would reveal to us everything we need to know about every candidate that we are personally responsible for voting for, that the truth would come forth, Lord, and we are calling in your victory, your righteousness, your justice, your peace, your joy, and your overwhelming power to sweep across this nation so we can come back into line with our covenant with you, Father, and stand to be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for joining me on Five Minutes on Faith. And tomorrow, we're going to talk about voting for the most pro-debt uh, reduction candidate. And that's a really powerful one because you know our nation's in great debt. So let's stay tuned for that for tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.